So I understand. Let me put my windows up. I understand people don't like my videos. And that sometimes I say things in my videos that they don't like. Whether it's even up as up to as far as cussing. You know the thing about it is. Uh, it's it's hard for me to want to care how people feel out here when most people are not Christ-like. It wouldn't make a difference whether I said a cuss word. It wouldn't make a difference because other people out here are doing the same garbage. Like I said, it's kind of hypocritical out here in this Christian world right now. I've, I've, I've listened to so much hypocrisy out here. It's unreal. I mean, um, again, I never, if, if I would have known six years later that I'm, that I, where I'm at right now, I would have never accepted a watchman's job or having anything to do with any of this stuff, man. I'm not, I mean, because you think, you think my days, you, how much more do you think that I can handle of this? How much more do you think I can handle? I know how much more months, how much more do you think that I can handle of this? Driving down the road, driving around a bunch of idiots everywhere. I understand it's talking about you. You prove to me people out here don't drive like idiots. Yeah, big trucks too. Not only, hey, you know how many times I witnessed 144 coming over here just now? This place right here. It's 7 o'clock on the East Coast. You know how many times I witnessed 144 just driving over here? Probably 10 times. Just driving over here this morning, I've witnessed 144 probably 10 times. I don't think people realize how many times in the last few days that I've told God, I don't want to do nothing else no more. Not warning, not nothing. People act out here right now, I'm going to tell you how bad Christianity is. I'm going to tell you how bad Christians and Christianity is. Everybody has gotten to the point where, as far as Christians are concerned, where sin is an everyday part of their life, and if you bring up sin to them, oh, it's it's okay, it's okay, I mean, it's it's okay. No, it's not okay. Never was okay. But it's okay. No, it's not okay. Um. That's how Christianity is. That's how Christians are. Oh, it's okay. No, it's not okay. What sin is okay? Let me ask you, what sin is okay? What sin, if I sit here and told you I was doing sinful things, what sin is okay to you? None of it. None of it's okay. And I'm going to tell you, this watchman job and as far as people out here trying to get the word out to people to get people to turn to God, do you know, do you know what it's like? Do you know what it's like when you're looking at an ocean and you're hoping to catch a perch in an ocean? You know how, you know, you know the, the size of a perch? Maybe a little bit bigger in your fist? Trying to ho hope to catch a perch? In an ocean, that's about the percentage of who's ever going to come to the truth out here. That the majority of the church is so far away from the truth. Oh, I don't care. I don't care if you know the truth about certain things in the Bible. That's irrelevant. It's literally irrelevant that people know certain the truth about certain things in the Bible. It doesn't make no difference what, the, what, what you know about the Old Testament and God and his creation or, or this, that, and the other. There's a salvation issue out here.
and the majority of Christians do not have it. There is a salvation issue and the majority of Christians do not have it. And uh, here's what I ran across the last couple of days. This is some stuff that I've checked out. And this is, this is what people think out here. So think about this. Why would people sit here and think certain things about certain topics, but yet if you bring up the same type of topic about, let's just say you don't think the Bible tells you how to live your life. I'm asking anybody that watches this video right now, does the Bible not tell you how to live your life? Have you answered that question yet? Does the Bible tell you how to live your life? Okay. So hopefully you said yes. If you didn't say yes, I mean, yes, there is a message of how you're supposed to live your life to ultimately end up in inheriting the kingdom. I mean, I could already prove to your eye here. You can't be conformed to the ways of this world, but why are the majority of Christians conformed to the ways of the world? Why are the majority of Christians no different than they were when they were evil at youth, doing the same thing? So what? You're not out here fornicating, but if you're out here cheating on something, stealing from someone, so what if you're not cheating or stealing or not fornicating? What if you're out here doing this or you're doing this? And everything is forbidden to do those things. What makes you any better than an atheist? Doesn't. Doesn't make you any better than an atheist. It doesn't. Because an atheist is in rebellion and the majority of Christians are in rebellion. Just like rebellion. The same rebellion we were when we were in the womb of our mother. So... All I know is that lately, I've uh, the last few days, I've watched a couple of videos. I've read a couple of articles about being a disciple or a believer. And see, some people out here want to believe that there's a difference between a believer, a Christian, and a disciple. And there's absolutely no difference than either one. Now, the two people out here that said that there was a difference between both of the two people, why did they both make it sound like a disciple was a person that was Christ-like, turned from their sins? You know, because it does have some things that Christ did say, you know, to uh, pick up the cross and stuff like that. But that picking up the cross was for everyone. When all of a sudden did picking up the cross have to do with someone being a disciple, but yet it didn't have anything to do with a Christian? And yet, why do people think that that Christian that's just a believer has salvation, but yet it sounds like to me that someone that is a disciple has to actually do something and why did these people actually bring up that these people have to do something as if they don't have salvation unless they do something now why is this being brought up like this because this i mean i guess I, I guess i can't have one of my windows down because it sounds like the same thing that they're telling a disciple is the same thing that a lot of Christians have have preached out here to, to people all over for years of how they were supposed to live their life. Now, why? Why are, why are, it's basically at the end of the day, someone trying to point out the difference between a Christian and a disciple is, it sounds like to me, they're trying to make an excuse that a Christian, all they have to do is believe and they don't have to change their life. But if you want to be a disciple of Christ, that you have to change your life. Well, who's, why are we all of a sudden 
putting works-based salvation into this because I've never been on, on uh, off track and on works-based salvation. But who's making the excuse and trying to say that they're two different people when, when Jesus gave the job to the disciples to go about making disciples of nations, he didn't say make a Christian here, a disciple here, a Christian here, a disciple here, a Christian, disciple, 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 a Christian, a disciple, a Christian. That's not true. They're the, they're the same people. They're the same people. Now, why are these people making it sound like that these disciples have to, you know what it sounds like to me? It sounds like to me at the end of the day that people out here don't want to claim that they have to do anything to be living for God. Believe. And that's not the case. That's furthest from the case if you're not going to be obedient to God. And it even tells you, look at every scripture in the book, in the Bible of obedience and let the truth shine. Just the ones about obeying Christ and tell me how all these Christians out here are, are obeying Christ. They're not. Now, uh, again, if you're conformed to the ways of this world... See, the, the very first time I ever witnessed a scripture that was used referring to someone being conformed to this world, and I think there's multiple scriptures in the Bible talking about this. The very first time I ever witnessed a scripture like this, it said that the Lord, it said, if you're conformed to the ways of the world, the Father isn't of us, Okay. Now, I went back looking for that scripture, and I have yet to find it. I have not even looked at I haven't even looked for it in three, four years because it didn't make no difference. At the end of the day, if there's anybody out here that is like, like unto the ways of this world, the, at the end of the day, the Father is not going to be of them. Now, why are the majority of Christians like the ways of this world? And I still want to know why that certain, why a Christian can go, I'm against pornography. Okay? If you're against sexual immorality, then why are you for sex out of wedlock and if you're not if you're against sex out of wedlock then why are you a pothead and if you're not a pothead then why are you like to get drunk okay so at the end of the day what the heck would it make a difference whether somebody watched pornography or not at the end of the day that person's no different than the rest of the world because a true follower of Christ would set themselves away from never doing the things of this world. See, people out here can make all the excuses for marijuana out here that they want. Nobody, I mean, I've always been the person that says that there's nothing wrong with smoking marijuana. But I know that a person is not the same smoking marijuana. Now, if you do it for medicinal and you only take a couple of hits or whatever you do just for medicinal, which 99% of the people that smoke it for medicinal are not smoking it for medicinal. They're doing it to get high. So I don't want to hear the hogwash about medicinal. But I can tell you this right now, you're not the same person. And it's not about, this video isn't about smoking marijuana. It's to prove at the end of the day, the majority of Christians in this life have still got Satan running. It's, it, you remember that, what's that little show? You remember that little show where the body opens up and there's like a little a little bot some little human body or something inside controlling that mechanical body you remember i know i know somebody out there has remembered a show in the past uh where it was like a like a robot style body 
think. What is I, it's it's real it's not the Eddie Murphy movie. I'm telling you right now, Satan is running the majority of Christians out here. You're not, no one out here is going to tell me that it's okay to sin at all against God because the more you sin, the more you let sin, you, you let the sin take root. It doesn't make a difference. If you think there's something wrong with cussing and you let, you let your guard down, you start cussing. Next thing you know, you see somebody up at the at the grocery store. Hey man, how's it going? Ah oh man, you know, not too bad. Hey, we're going out with my friends this weekend. If you want to come by, come come on by. Next thing you know, you go meet up with your you meet up with people. Next thing you know, you drink. Maybe you fornicate. Maybe you have cheat on your spouse. You have a girls' night out or a man's night out. You know, you th th this there's not even a commitment in a relationship today because you don't even know what somebody does before they even get married I'm proving a point here that I'm telling you right now the majority of Christians are no different than a non-believer non-believers don't want to hear what God has to say and most Christians don't want to hear what God has to say So here's Christians out. Oh, it's okay if you sin. It's okay. No, it's not okay. It's not okay at all. Because God's people, again, are incapable of sinning. Why are they incapable of sinning? The scriptures that everybody out here witnesses and go and and just thinks that evidently God's contradicting himself because it doesn't make sense where it says this. I mean, why don't why don't Christians ever talk about these topics? I've only witnessed maybe on one hand of people in five, six years now of people that have talked about how that God's people don't sin. It's not that it's impossible. It's that living for God, they're a new person. There's a regeneration, renewal of the mind, a new creation. Christ is running their life, the Holy Spirit, and they're of God. The majority of Christians out here, like I said, they've knocked, hoping that Christ would would answer but at the end of the day they weren't ever really willing to let Christ come and reign in their life I'm telling you I mean if you think I ain't found more and more people out here that act like Christians and, I, and I'm witnessing more and more Christians out here being frauds that's exactly what I'm witnessing everywhere out here I'm witnessing more and more Christians more and more people that consider themselves to be Christians that are frauds today, than, and, I, and I'm witnessing more and more people out here that are living for God that have got the right message. That sin cannot be present in a person's life and be a follower of Christ. It cannot. I'm not going to sit here and say shit isn't going to happen. But it ain't going to happen. You're not going to let things happen. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. No, no, no. You're going to have yourself under control. I, I mean, literally. I've witnessed people in my life that I guarantee you aren't out here doing things that they're not supposed to be doing. And a lot of Christians out here, if they got tempted to do something that they're not supposed to do, they would give in. So somewhere we've got a, somewhere we've got a, 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 a major problem here. And this is how Christianity is. I'm talking the majority of Christianity does not even know where we're at if it hadn't been for a few people out here making videos. And then all of a sudden, everybody's an overnight Cracker Jack Box theologian. Everybody knows everything. And if it wasn't for the Israel stuff going on right now, they, I mean, hell, people still got their heads so far up their butt, man. I'm telling you this right now. There are people out here right now 
wouldn't know that if something was going to happen tomorrow or 15, 20 years down the road, man. And how can somebody call, how can you people out here think that these people are Christians that they can't even see the times we're in? I can guarantee you right now, my niece believes in once saved. Right now, if she was right here in front of me, she would not even think that there's anything wrong with this world. Because that's how worldly she is. Now, she believes in once saved. What well, makes her not be right with God, but all these other once saved, oh, they're right with God. No, none of them are. None of them that are in habitual, hypocritical, unrepentant sin, none of them are. You know, isn't it strange that I read across that vid that that scripture in the ESV? I googled it. I find another video. I mean, I find a video looking up once saved. And then I hear the scripture again the other day. All pertaining that were being saved. So if we're clearly being saved, then that means that you cannot do what you want. Because if you're being saved, then that means that you can fall on your butt. I heard the scripture and again, the perfect video to talk, for somebody to prove that the Bible preaches that in the moment we're being saved, in the future tense we're being saved. What video is that again? Unlearn the lies is the name of the is the is the guy that makes the videos. Shaved head sometimes, a beard. Uh, unlearn the lies. The name of the video is Is Once Saved, Always Saved Biblical. Find that video and listen to what he says. So as everybody out here is saying, Oh, there's nothing wrong with sin. With you, if you do sin, oh, so that's okay. No, it's not okay. Because this is the very reason why there's things in the Bible pertaining to that we're not supposed to be sinning. And then if we, and that we can mess ourselves up by letting sin come back into our life. But a lot of people have never turned away from a life of sin after sitting here thinking that they had given their life to Christ. So it was, it was totally irrelevant. They only fooled themselves. You know, I'm going to tell you this. You know, I... Man, I, I like to, I like talking about all a lot of these topics, but there's a lot of things out here. I mean, I want people to know the truth. I, I want people to know the truth, but it, it ain't gonna make no difference because there are so many people out here that have gone down every one of these paths. The other day I watch a pastor. He has a great video. Then he gets to the point where in the video he talks about repentance. Just for a second. He talks about repentance. For just a second. And why did he bring up repentance? Because of what he was getting ready to say after that. <clears throat> he said he's seen a half a million people give their life to Christ by saying a prayer. I mean, I, I hate to shove this in people's faces and down their throats because I brought this stuff up so many times, but I can say whatever I want to you and you can either believe it or not. I can either mean it or not. I can tell you I care about you and not care about you. You Do, do you realize that? That I can sit here... Think about all the people out here that abuse other people. I could act like I care about you and not care about you, correct? I mean, just say, yes, Jeff, that sounds like a logical thing. Yes, I agree. You could say you care and not care, okay? I 
again, I've seen those flyers where people say all you got to do is pray a prayer and they believe that you can be saved by saying that prayer. That does not mean that at the end of the day that that believer, that person that's going to believe that message is going to listen to that, is going to allow Christ to actually come into his life. The Holy Spirit actually lead him in his life. I could sit here all day long and and say anything and not mean it. I'm a sinner in need of a savior. The only way there's any logic, I want to point this out because I don't want people to believe in this garbage. How many people have believed in this garbage and it never amounted to a hill of beans is, is astronomical. I'm a sinner in need of a savior. There, that meant I had a problem, my sin. I need my sin fixed. I have a sin problem and I need it fixed. A lot of people, I've even found articles lately talking about that a lot of people that have turned to Christ, turned to Christ because of their sin problem. That that was part of the reason why they turned to Christ. Now, it should have been for the, the reason of God and Jesus, but part of it was because of sin. Okay? I'm a sinner in need of a savior. If I went and said that because I heard somebody say, all you got to say is that garbage, and all of a sudden, poof, Are you so sure that the, uh, that's all a person's going to have to say to get regeneration and renewal of the mind? Isn't that the stuff that's going to make somebody born again? Are you saying that I can read anything out here and not mean it? And all of a sudden, the Holy Spirit's just going to go, open my heart. Christ is going to reign in my life and I'm going to be saved. I'm going to be born again. You guys can believe all you want. This stuff is not necessarily going to work. I mean, I, I, I'm i telling you this right now. I, I'm trying to point this stuff out is so no one gets deceived. That some Because how can this guy sit here and claim that he's witnessed five or 600,000 people pray a prayer and that he believes these people can be saved. Do you know that this guy has gotten flack from people? That's why he brought up repentance. I am telling you this right now, and I'm going to say it again. Most Christians are not in repentive state. They have not turned from their ways. And until you turn from your ways, you are not turning to God. And if you're not going to do those things, you're not going to have a regeneration and renewal of the mind. You're not going to be a new creation in Christ. And you're, and you're not going to be led by the Holy Spirit. And the wages of sin is still going to be death. Because you're not covered under the blood because you're still in the darkness. And if you don't ever come out of the darkness, then you're never going to be covered under the blood. And you do not have an advocate through Christ. Because of your sins. There you go. There you go. There you go. That's, there you go. You don't turn from your wicked ways. You're going to be denied. Doesn't make no difference what some man or woman up here has. What's that called? What's a, what kind of words can I use? Constru construed. Well, I mean, I'm trying to think. I don't. I really don't know what kind of words to use to mean that man that somebody has put together to fool people. I'm a sinner in need of a savior. If I was never going to allow the Holy Spirit to work in my life and change me, it was never going to work. It was never going to work. And I can guarantee you there are a lot of Christians out here that have never been, never been technically saved or being saved.
And see, here's a deal. Here's the thing. Here's where we walk by faith and not by sight. Even if somebody were to do everything it took, and why I mean by everything it took, because what the Bible expects for a person to be saved, I'm not talking about works-based. I'm not talking about anything. Logic, Bible logic doesn't mean that everything's going to change tomorrow. It doesn't. You're not going to, oh man, I feel the Holy Spirit. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. <laughs> it's not. <coughs> There's no proof that tomorrow immediately you're going to go, I'm saved. My goodness. I feel the Holy Spirit. Went, boy, but, but. Unless you let somebody out here fool you. Believe me, there are too many people out here that have been fooled. Do not be deceived. Do not be deceived. Do not be deceived. Do not be deceived. How many places in the Bible? Do not be deceived. Do not be deceived. Do not be deceived. I, it, at the end of the day, the majority of Christians are deceived. I know. I know <coughs> like I said, I can't keep on making these videos, man. I don't know why God keeps on... Uh, why God won't just relinquish me. I don't want even want to think about this stuff no more, man. If you people truly want to do what you guys want to do, I want you people to do what you guys want to do. Because that's exactly how it's going to be no matter how I feel. That's what it's going to be. <coughs> yeah, I see. Yeah, I mean, believe me. Believe me. That's exactly what it's going to be. And it ain't going to get any better for me if I don't get my butt out of here either. I'm not stupid. God let me out here and I'm not stupid. A fly could land on me and I'd be... <laughs> Technically, I don't get mad about a fly. But believe me, it ain't. It wouldn't take much right now for me to be mad. And I don't see nothing changing it either. Nope. Absolutely nothing. There's only one thing that can change it and it's not going to happen. And that's by me still staying out here. There's only one thing that can change it, and it ain't happening. And I'm not expecting it to either. So, like I said, if, if everybody wants to sit here and 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 be deceived by churches and go to churches that want to lead people astray and think there's nothing wrong with sin and people not preach about sin no more. And believe me, just, I mean, I'm, right now I'm in Pennsylvania. Again, this is the state I was in when I was driving down by Pittsburgh. And there was these little sayings I used to say all the time. And there was a guy that came on the radio. He was a Christian speaker on the radio. And, he's, and he brought up all these sayings that I used to say all the time. I mean, it was just unbelievable how somebody could say the same thing. And then he would, then he even after that brought up the church doesn't even talk about sin no more. That's right. The church is deceived, man. The church is literally deceived. Here you got the church, here, here you got some Christians out here that would believe that when Christ died, died on the cross and he took the sins, you know, because the scriptures that people read, they're not even rightly dividing. They would think that there was never no sin after that. There are some Christians, I can promise you, from that point on would say that there was never no sin after that. And then there's going to be Christians out here that believe that once you give your life to Christ, that you're no longer under sin and sin can never take, uh, what's words? There's perfect words. 
can never take you again. Yes, sin can. And there's literally proof all over the entire Bible. But at the end of the day, people are never going to sit here and see the Bible the way it truly is. That if it says one thing in the Bible, there's a reason. And one, I mean, why? I'm still trying to sit here and say this so people recognize this. Jesus, I mean, John says that if you're in, I mean, if you sin, you're of your father, the devil. There was no, there is nothing, nothing, nothing. I mean, nothing changes it. If you live for the, if you live for the flesh, the ways of this world, you die. Cut and dry. Both of them scriptures, I mean, just because I may not be saying them perfect, I'm rightly divided. Both of them cut and dry. You live for the flesh. The flesh and the spirit do not mix, correct? It doesn't make a difference whether I'm saying the scripture word for word. Does it say that the flesh and the spirit don't mix? How about the light and the darkness? They don't mix. Cut and dry, aren't they? Now, again, where does anything that anybody can prove that Paul would say later on at a different point in time that would debunk them scriptures, any scripture? It don't work. There's no contradiction there. You can know the gospel all you want. And truly, if you knew the gospel, you would know all the gospels. You would know the whole message. It, it not just Christ dying and what Christ did. See, that's why, no wonder why people have a stink. No wonder why people have a stink about when people don't talk enough about Calvary. Because their stink is that they always want to talk about the gospel, just like they can't ever come off the, t they can never quit talking about the scripture. Uh, we're saved by grace through faith. <coughs> I mean, that's the, that's the most over ruined, ruined scripture in the entire Bible. Between that and, and I hear that now more than I hear John three sixteen. John 3, 16 ain't even the most popular scripture today. We're saved by grace through faith. We're saved by grace through faith. Yeah. The most uh, uh, overrun scripture today. And, and most people don't even have God's grace anyway when they're fully in sin. Because again, there's, a, there's, there's, what's that? It's called the definition of of God's grace. God's grace teaches people to deny all ungodliness and worldly nut, lust. Isn't it strange all those visions and dreams of people missing the rapture because they had lust in their heart? They were doing something with lust. They believed in God. They missed the rapture. Why was that? That's right, unrighteousness, because they were deserving of God's wrath. But these people believed. They were deceived. Lust. But if they had God's grace, they would be able to deny all ungodliness and worldly lust. See, God's the one that made me a watchman. If you ask me, Jeff, again, if you died five minutes from now, would you make it? Or, 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 I think I've already answered that question many a times. Nope. Because I don't see no re, re, reborn here. Nope. I mean, I've witnessed God. I've witnessed all these things. But again, what am I? How many times have I heard people say, that God uses super, certain people. Does that mean that they had to be saved for them to be used? 
is there anything special about me over anyone? <coughs> vessel. A vessel. That's right. At least somebody out there should can give me some credit and say, hey, at least you're being honest, Jeff. I mean, does God want to save me? <coughs> yep. So, um, I've had a cold for like the last three or four days. Well, anyway, I'm just telling you this right now that I don't know how long the church has been this horrible, but it's horrible right now. I'm just going to give you one example. Even life church hasn't been around for too long. I mean, I'm 46, and I'm, there was a time when there wasn't a life church. Look how many has sprung out all over America. Won't you drive by their parking lot and see if it isn't full this coming Sunday? You want to know how many deceived Christians there are? That's just life church. That isn't the Baptist church out here preaching their falsehood once saved doctrines of demons leading the masses astray. Ain't no different than the Catholic Church out here and their doctor uh, uh, traditions of men and their falsehoods of trying to save themselves. Few. Few it is. Few it is. Few it's going to be. God gave us the truth. Like I said, this video, literally, if you could throw it in the ocean, is like catching a perch. But it hurts because it hurts when I sit here and think that I don't care about people out here making their stupid videos, thinking they're overnight crackerjack box theologians out here on YouTube. I'm talking about just the regular world out here when I know that there are people out here every day that are, that are doing sinful things and they're not against their sinful things. So they don't confess of their sinful things. Just like Catholics, they build up all this sin and they think all of a sudden one day I'm going to ask God for forgiveness for my sins. And, and it's, that's hypocrisy. That's a hypocrite for you. And to think that, that all these other Christians out here that are doing sinful things, there's nothing wrong. There are, like I said, there are, there are I guarantee you there are people all over the world that are observing God at all times. It is conditional salvation. It is not unconditional. It is conditional. And again, knowing God is going to turn people away because... They were conformed to the ways of this world and you should know what conforming to the ways of this world is because you were or have been at one time. Either are or have been. And I understand that people have different videos. All I know is I ain't gonna, I'm never gonna preach that garbage, man. 
I want this life. I want this life to get over just as much as everybody else out here. But that just means everybody out here that thinks they're right with God's going to find out quicker that they're not. I've never wanted to rush. I do want to get this life over with. I just don't know how much more I can handle of thinking about this garbage all day long. Literally, this I wake up every day, all day long, all day long, all day long. I feel like I'm cursed all day long. Tomorrow, all day. The next day, all day. Weekend gets here, all weekend. Next week, all week. The week after, all week. While some of y'all can take a break every once in a while and, and forget about things, I'm out here tomorrow, the next day, 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 the next day. And you know, I could actually sit here and think that a lot of people could think that Satan's trying to use me to accuse people. Well, no, I know who who showed me all the things and did all the things for me. I do. But I understand when I look around how people are out here that call themselves Christians and see how bad it is. You think people don't need to hear this stuff every day? I'll tell you that right now, that the majority of people, all they care about it is their stinking denomination. At the end of the day, that is what the majority of people are, is caught up and more worried about their stinking denomination. I'm a Baptist. I'm a I probably got that wrong. 500,000 Jehovah's Witnesses around the world, but only 144,000 are going to be saved. I'm a Baptist. Yeah, uh, pr oh, only certain predestined Christians are going to make it to the kingdom. I don't know why I go to church, because I don't know if I'm one of them. Arrogance, ignorance, and pride. Bam. I mean, that it, it, it sounds familiar in my life, and I see it in most Christians out here also. Well, like I said, Michaela Cooper's got a good message. And I'm not sitting here saying this stuff to be mean to people, man. I'm really not knowing. 48 minutes? Come on, people. Get my trailer loaded so I can get down the road. Maybe I can go jump in a great lake. Well, repent and turn from your wicked ways. Why do so many Christians out here that ha sound like that they're truly living for God at the end of the day? They're preaching repentance. 
turning from our ways, turning from our ways, turning from our ways. Yep. Well, that's enough for this video.